grandson of Hugh Hamer. Yes. And we've been talking about this clock, and I want him to tell us more about that and get a good shot of the clock. But probably the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to get clear in my mind just who your father was and your grandfather so I can see the line. Now, your grandfather was George Washington Hamer, and that was Hugh Hamer's son. Yes. Okay. Okay. He was my great-grandfather, you see. Okay. And my grandfather. Now, he had a son named Frank, or, or was that your uncle? No, that was my uncle. Well, he was uh, George's oldest son. See? Okay. That's where I got my name, Uncle Frank. Okay. And uh, I was born, happened to be born on his birthday, and they just named me Frank, you see. But your father was... Uh, Albert. Albert, okay. Mm -hmm. George Albert, actually G.A. Hammer is the way he signed it. Uh huh. Well, now we saw the uh, the stone in the cemetery for George Washington Hammer, and then I think there's still some pictures and things of him uh, around. Did he actually live in the village, or uh, had he moved out of the village? He was still living there when it went yeah. down. Went. Uh -huh. uh, he wasn't the last hammer to operate. The last hammer to operate it was the. Uh, Bruce Hamer. Okay, now that was Robert Bruce Hamer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he's the one that leased it out to Jonathan Turley and then later yeah. sold it. Well, yeah, he or he's, well, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, yeah. But uh, now, he, he's he got a, I think, a great nephew uh -huh. that's living in Cincinnati. And mm -hmm. we correspond and, and mm -hmm. <coughs> just kind of keep acquainted. He comes and here about every summer in camps a while. Yeah. My. Well, now, when we were talking to Bill Overlease just a few days ago, he said that back in the 50s, he interviewed your Uncle Frank and got a lot of information for the things that he wrote about Village uh -huh. from your uncle, who was still alive, and I guess it was 1956 that he yeah. interviewed him. Uh, I think I've seen a picture. I don't think I've got one. It, uh, he and uh, well, the man that had an awful lot to do with getting it rebuilt down there. E.Y. Guernsey? Yeah. Yeah. No, not Guernsey. Oh, Lieber, maybe. Uh, Lieber, yeah. yeah. Richard Lieber. Yeah. I've got, uh -huh. Well, I've seen about it. I don't know. I might have a picture someplace of that of them. Okay, now I saw a picture of Lieber, and it said Frank Hamer, and I thought maybe it was you. Well, that's Uncle Frank. But that was your uncle. That actually was I've got. I've got. I've okay. got that someplace. Okay, I thought when it said Frank Hamer it was you, and I thought in my mind, now he is, he's held his age real well. <laughs> but that makes sense now that that was your uncle. Yeah. So, uh, what do you remember of your grandpa, George Washington Hamer? He was uh, he was in the Civil War, I think we saw yeah. in a stone yeah. Yeah. that he had served in the war. And uh, getting back to these, uh, uh, the ones that operated the mill, mm -hmm. this uh, Bruce Hammer. Mm -hmm. Now this George, this is uh, uh, the one up in Cincinnati. Is uh, names just get away from me like that. Anyway, he told me I said something about one time I was talking to him. We were talking about it, and uh, I said something about he was the last Hammer to ever operate the thing. And he says yes, and he he closed it up and walked to Cincinnati. Huh. And stayed up there, and never did come back. And so he's probably buried there. Uh, well, up in there someplace. Yeah, you know, I wondered about that. Uh huh. Because uh, he there's a little there. town. There's a little town right east of Cincinnati, and I've wondered about it. He knows about it. He's been there. This uh, uh, who did I say it was uh, the, the boy? I, I've got over that. Tom. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been to this little town out there, Hamersville. What it's called. Maybe possibly named that. He says there's nothing out there. Yeah. Mouse day thing. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, we talked about the clock, and I we got to talking about the gears and the, the clock itself. But now, this was Hugh Hamer's clock, actually, that was in his house in Spring Mill. Uh, they, uh, I think some write ups have said that it was in the office down there. Okay. What they call the office, uh -huh. but I've always doubted that. Mm -hmm. I thought I thought actually it's set in the mail. Huh. In the grist mill itself. Yes. My. I've had, that was told to me somewhere or other that it was 
But I, I kind of doubt that because they've yeah. been more or less uh, dust and dirt and stuff. I was going to say in there, but I always thought it was probably in the office. Uh huh. Because I expect that's where Tom Hammer or Hugh Hammer spent quite a little. Now, time. who did you get the clock off of? Your father? No, uh, Uncle Frank. Okay. He gave it to me. He was just through with it. Yeah. As I said, I don't know why. He was mm -hmm. all in uh, Bedford for, as an undertaker for 40 years. And now, all. he was the one that was associated with Day and Carter? Yeah. Uh, he was Fiddle the original. Home. Okay. What's Day and Carter over there now? But he was, he helped fund and start that. Mm -hmm. It was Hammer and Day for a long time. Okay. And then it got to be. Well, they got out of it, uh -huh. and uh, he and uh, Uncle Frank got, he wanted to get out of it, they uh -huh. out of it. and then they picked up this Carter. Uh -huh. they, this this Carter had worked for both of them, mm -hmm. and uh, the one that Uncle Frank started with, you know, and uh, now it's Day and Carter. You see. But it was Hamer and Day for years. Yeah, for years. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had seen some photographs of the old fun funeral home, maybe they came from you. Um, that had been copied and it showed horses out in front and the wagon or the sign said Hamer and Day funeral mm -hmm. home. So you you saw a picture of the four horses? Uh huh. Well I've got that. I've got the ring. See I've got whatever he had. Yeah. When he died I got everything he had. He okay. owned everything. My. His wife had been gone a while. They never had any children. So right. this clock came from him, and he probably got it from his father. But he gave him a clock a long time before he, before yeah. he died. He wanted to see it running, and he uh -huh. was taken to death when I had it fixed. My. And uh, that's when I lived out on the, mm -hmm. the farm in Orleans. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I had it down there for a few years. Now that's the farm that's in this picture here? No. Or uh, that one, or is this an entirely separate? That, that was my farm. Okay. When I said down to Orleans, uh -huh. this would have been well. It was I went I went down there in 1938. Mm -hmm. There was two brothers in, in Orleans, Jenkins brothers, mm -hmm. that were wealthy. Their dad uh, was no telling how many times a millionaire had been. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the Jenkins owned the bank down there mm -hmm. and some big farms around there, and I was in. Uh, I had bought a farm and lost it, mm -hmm. and this was depression time. Yeah. And all, and uh, this uh, Roscoe Jenkins was the oldest one, mm -hmm. owned this farm that just joined Orleans, right, right this side of Orleans. Mm -hmm. but the highway goes right through it now. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to change his way of operating, so yeah. I went in a uh, 50-50 partnership with him mm -hmm. on that farm, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I was there ten years. I might have been there yet today if, if the war hadn't come along. Mm -hmm. See, the war come along and I lost my boy. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, right. it, I just about to work myself to death. Mm -hmm. That's when we bought this farm. We okay, and then you bought the one that's here in the oil painting. Yes. Okay, and that's the one that's over. That's, that was our near the park. Uh, well, we bought another farm that joined that. Mm -hmm. and then this one got for sale, and we bought it. Uh, my wife and I had talked it over, and we decided. Of course, I was down there operating 500 acres mm -hmm. and all. As I say, about to work myself to death. I said, "Listen, I said, if we could wind up here and, and buy about 200 acres, mm -hmm. we we could look good, and it'd be, it'd be ours and mm -hmm. all." And, well, we we bought 80, and then this got for sale, 116, mm -hmm. which made us 196 acres. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, and when we did move up there then, mm -hmm. well that belonged to us. We didn't have any mortgage on it or anything. We'd saved your money and My. and we paid for How it. How much did you pay? Do you remember? We, well, it wasn't an awful lot at that time. Uh, it was. See, it was actually two farms. There was two prices. Yeah. We'd owned 80 acres and joined this. Then when we got the chance to, the, the 80 acres didn't, the, the land was all right, but the, the improvements, there was an old log house on it and, mm -hmm. and something, and, and then we put them together, and, and all I had to do was make a, a gate mm -hmm. and a fence, yeah. Yeah. you know, so. Uh, now 
your wife is the one in the picture. Uh, uh, yeah, she was in the picture. I think I had heard on another interview you had done that she was a school teacher. Yeah, and I'd well, seen some photos of her class. She got back to teaching before we left the Jenkins place okay. down there. And uh, this Mr. Jenkins, he was peculiar. He said that when we, we made the deal, he says, now, uh, you're going to run it. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. He says, my brother and I own the bank down there. Uh -huh. Whatever you need, go down there and get it. <laughs> That's kind of nice. Well, <laughs> I got into the hog and cattle business pretty good. He hadn't been having anything done out yeah. during the Depression. Mm -hmm. So I got to buying hogs and cattle and raising hogs and mm -hmm. things and all. And I'd go down there if I needed two or three or four thousand dollars. There wasn't any questions about it. You know, all, they wanted me to pay it back, and I did. Yeah. I always paid it back. You know, right. and was, right. I went in there, of course, I was uh, yeah, uh, Roscoe was the one I was with. He was the oldest. He didn't have anything to do with the bank anymore. Mm -hmm. He owned about half of it. Mm -hmm. But his brother operated. He, 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 you'd go in there and he'd be working up in front, mm -hmm. just taking care of business and all. Well, the reason that I think I came across your wife being a school teacher is there was a family that lived around the village at the turn of the century named Klaus. And they had some pictures of their grandfather, maybe, and he was in her class. Mm -hmm. uh, at school that she was teaching in that area. Yeah. Now, do you remember any of the Klauses? We were trying to get some information on them, and they said that their family had lived in the village. Uh, at one point, they had worked in the distillery back in the early days, and then I read someplace else where they were in the village uh, after Turley owned it, maybe when it was abandoned. Well, it could have been. Do you remember any of the Klauses? I don't remember any. I knew some of them, but I don't remember any of them living down there. Okay. The first people that I remember living down there was the, the uh, all buried up there in the cemetery. Bundys, maybe? Bundys. Okay, now they but lived in it when you were young. I remember the Bundys. Now, was the village already pretty well closed when they lived there? Uh, the mill and all of that was closed? Well, you see, I can go back. Uh, some of these, you know, I, I don't know whether you know it or not. I kind of used to make some talks down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that is that is one of the things I started. Uh -huh. I started with just a, a abandoned place. Okay. It looked very much like when I was a kid. Uh -huh. I'd say six years old. Uh -huh. We used to see our road from from the from the farm there mm -hmm. in the Mitchell come through the corner of the park. Okay. Uh -huh. You know where the railroad is over there, right yeah. close. Right. Well, we crossed the railroad right there. Okay. Come in there across the railroad, mm -hmm. and then that, that road run around there mm -hmm. is just the same road that we traveled with, with horses and buggies. Okay. Only it's blacked off now. So that would have been around 1902, 1903, when you were six years old. Then. Yeah. What yeah. Did, What did it look like back then? There were some people living there. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. These Mondays lived down there, and it looked very much like it does today anymore than. It was just growed up bushes and mm -hmm. and, uh, and was just quiet. It, yeah. You could go down there and see it stood down there open. Mm -hmm. We used to go up there. We'd have company come from Louisville or mm -hmm. someplace, Washington down here. Mm -hmm. They always wanted to go up to the farm. Yeah. They, they'd say go up to the mill uh -huh. and all. Well, you go up there and walk in and just help yourself. Was there a floor in the mill then? Yeah. There's still you know, th three, three stories of it. I've been all over it when I was just a kid. Were they using it for anything or just empty? It was just empty. Yeah. People just carried stuff away if they wanted, I reckon. My goodness. Of course, you, maybe you've seen some of the pictures with it bolted yeah. up over the windows. Uh-huh. Well, I think Lehi did that for a, mm -hmm. a safety thing, probably. Yeah. Thinking somebody eventually would get hurt in there. Or something. Was the flume already gone and the wheel? Yeah, I think it was. The gears? But there was still a floor. Well, it was still in there when I first remember. Now, this might be a difficult question, but I've really been trying to find out. Do you have any idea if they just had one set of uh, grinding stones there uh, when the mill was in operation, or did they maybe have more than one set? I, I don't really that? know. I, I'm just trying to recreate in my mind what that first floor might have looked like in the original mill, mm -hmm. and if it would have looked like what we have today, or. I don't know. My guess would be pretty 
much like it is today. I don't know. They tried awful hard to copy everything. Yeah. You know. I, I've looked at it, and I think, well, they had engineers a long time ago, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, did the Bundys live in one of the Hamer houses, or which house? Yes, they? I had in mind that they lived in that lower house. Okay. Okay, now it's the one that eventually... Thomas Hamer's house. It, now, it basically came apart entirely, didn't it? Deteriorated. Oh, they did. There was, uh, there was a time there, there wasn't hardly anything there. Yeah. But that, uh, what they called the office. Okay. Now, when they started, first started, uh, we just used to go up there and never think anything about it. Of course, we went, I'd say, maybe two or three times a week up there. Mm -hmm. where you, just, you could just look over in there, fields, right. you know. Yeah. You, know, you can yet today, you know. And uh, I, uh, my brother and I went down there one time. We were just loafing around. That's, we knew they'd started to do something down there. Mm -hmm. And we went up there, and I remember just real good. I knew, kind of knew this Dick Gurdjie. Yeah. He lived next door to Michael Frank. Okay. So and, that's uh, he possibly was, why he got so much information in well, that early time. He was prying weatherboarding off of that office. He was uh -huh. weatherboarded over the logs. Uh -huh. So those logs are original there. Of course, they were in good shape then. Right. Uh, now, how about on the other side of the creek where the Granny White House is now in that area? Were there any other buildings there or do you remember any? Seems like up on the hill behind Granny White, it looks like there used to be a house set up there and maybe a roadway of some kind. Uh, I was going to say, where is the Granny White house? See, that's a, as you walk in from the parking lot now. There's the, the Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I the know Sheik's house and Granny White. And I was wondering, of course, they were brought in later yeah. on, and I was wondering if there was anything that said over there or if you remember any foundations of houses? No, I don't. I, uh, I know what you're talking about yeah. now. But uh, back as I can just remember that, it's just always just in there and brewed up and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I expect it was still part of the distillery there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's about it. You know. How about the apothecary in general store? Do you remember? Uh, Were they still there when they got ready for the store? Both of them are original. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, because we used to just never thought anything about them. Just, just yeah. passed them up and went on. Yeah, probably wasn't much there, but just yeah. uh, old boards. and. Yeah. Uh, I saw one picture where it looked like there was a chimney in the Well, uh, now there was, one, there was one time that his family lived in one of them. Oh, okay. For, it was one of the Bundys, mm -hmm. I think, that lived in one of them for a year or two. Now. A picture that we have of the park when it was first opened shows a caretaker's house too down in the village. Do you remember, uh, was that there? Did they build that when the village was restored? It was there right uh, where that meeting house is now, right across from there, uh, over towards the blacksmith shop. There yeah. was a caretaker's yeah. house. Built right up in the... Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't know if that was in the original village and it was restored or if that was added or... Lehigh built it down there. Okay. They built that little house. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, a, I don't know just really why, whether they just felt they had to keep somebody down there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> because the others just got where they just, mm -hmm. people just burn them up, you might say. Mm -hmm. And uh, there wasn't any. But this was a little four room house. Mm -hmm. Lady next door to me here, mm -hmm. I said something to her one time. Uh, when they first moved here, I never knew her. They're, don't hardly know her yet today. But she says, I was born in Spring Mill Park. My goodness. I says, where? She says, you, you know, there was a little white house down there, mm -hmm. right up there where we're talking about. Mm -hmm. She says, I was born in that. My. Uh -huh. uh, she's a woman that's, uh, oh, I don't know, she's probably in her 60s. And what's her name? But, uh, Hart is her married name. This is the second marriage for her. Okay. Her first husband died. It'd be interesting to, to talk with her and see what she remembers. Well, now they must have tore that I house down she, fairly early because I didn't see it in any later now, pictures. Now she said her her dad was the miller. Okay. She said that's that was mm -hmm. the way I understood it. Mm -hmm. So 
somebody was still operating at them because that mm -hmm. that was well it had been dead and then brought back to life or something mm -hmm. i don't know who owned it when they well there's still some question in my mind and in some of the histories whether Jonathan Turley sold it to Lehigh or if he sold it to someone else first, a Salem Stone Company that then sold it to Lehigh. And uh, I've read several accounts and some say that the Salem Stone Company bought it and then in turn sold to Lehigh. Well, uh, just not clear to me. Uh -huh. You've probably read this history thing that this uh, Indian man... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking well, about. Well, you see, I've got the whole thing, uh -huh. you know. And I've read that kind of, it's kind of in my mind. I don't know mm -hmm. whether Lehigh bought it from that stone company or... Or if they bought it from Turley. Yeah. Or, or Turley's I, family. Uh, I've heard Nair say from the stone company. I don't know. Yeah. Well, from what I read in his book, Lehigh didn't actually begin until a little bit later after Turley's death. So there was a few years there where somebody owned yeah. it. And uh, I'm a little curious about he totally died right at the time I was born. Yeah, about the same year, wasn't it? Yeah, uh -huh. 1896. And do you remember his daughters or the others in the family? I know some of the other family way down the line. But mm -hmm. There's uh, one of the girls still lives over there in the Riverdale. But, uh, oh, she's still alive? Yes, there was two sisters lived over now, there. Is this Rosa, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, Rosie. Rosie's dead. Uh -huh. yeah. The only one that's living over there now is uh, Wilma. Okay. Wilma, Wilma Turley. And that's a daughter of Or Turner. Smith, that's her Smith. Her yeah. name's Smith. Hmm. Yeah. My goodness, well, yeah. I'll definitely have to try to talk to her. And, well, and well, she's, 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 she's smart. And, uh -huh. and uh, I don't know, there's something come up. Oh, there's some maps in that thing from, uh, that, uh, that Indian got up, you mm -hmm. know. I think they're taken off of probably uh, maps in the courthouse at Bedford or something oh, like that. Uh -huh. And uh, there, there was one of them that uh, uh, I never could figure out because uh, uh, going back to Lawrenceport, you know Lawrenceport's just east of the park there. Yeah, right. You uh, know, mm -hmm. well, the, the river makes a big bend like that. Yeah, it goes on north. And then makes another big bend down every river vale. Yeah. Well, in this big bend down every river vale, mm -hmm. there's another name on on that. There's there's little names in there you can't hardly read them. Mm -hmm. uh, who 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 owned it? Owned it. Mm -hmm. Well, I took it up with Al with this Wilma one day. I said, mm -hmm. Wilma, I don't understand. I says as far back as I can remember, everything around here was sturdy. Mm -hmm. She says, yes, my grandfather owned 800 acres down in here. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, he, I thought he owned it. I said, you always had turkey talk about the turkey bottoms up there. Yeah. But it's somebody else's name on it. So you, you, uh -huh. those things you don't understand why, why yeah. it's right away. It's probably a lot of it depending on who was making the math. The, <laughs> but the same thing showed my grandfather's farm. Okay. Right there in, well, he wasn't in the bend of the river. He was below the bend. George Washington Hamer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now the Horseshoe Bend, that's where the flat boats were made and they put them in the water and sent the stuff off to Well, water. yes. Is that the same bend there? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm talking about the one up the river from that. Okay, uh, farther up the river. Bend. Farther up the river from it. Uh -huh. Okay. It'd be interesting to see on the map how far that would actually be cross country from the village because now you have to drive all the way around the outside. Well, and, yes. And uh, I'm sure it's a lot closer to the village than you might think. Uh, uh, now this uh, this old Indian, he told me, he said uh, at one time Hugh Hamer owned everything from the mill to the river. Mm -hmm. Well, on this map there's one place in there that says there's another name on the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, makes me think they got it out of the courthouse or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I probably did. Now, there's some other people around the uh, the area that's a park now that weren't right in the village, but I was curious if you knew them or maybe knew their their children. The Lynns were one of them I wondered about. Uh, William Lynn or James Lynn that owned a lot of the property that George Donaldson bought, and then he moved over 
a little bit more towards Lawrence Porn. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I didn't know if you knew any of his sons or children. Or I I knew some men since a long time ago, but I don't know where there was where there was any connection. Uh -huh. How about the Hicksons? Timothy Hickson owned a lot of the property down there that's now where the lake is. And he had, I think, 20 children, so yes. there would have been a lot of Hicks and children. Yes. Uh, one that we've been looking into lately was a, uh, a Carrie Bell Hickson that married a uh, uh, Poxville, I believe. We didn't know if maybe you knew any of them. I knew some of those, some of those 20 children. Okay. There's three or four of them I remember. Uh huh. And you, this this Har Harvard and March way out here. Uh huh. Well, their mother was one of them. Their grandmother, I mean, which would be now. Okay. I, I, I think I'm right about that. Okay, so that their grandmother would be Timothy Hickson and daughter. his wife? Daughter. Or his daughter, okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Be interesting. And then there were some of the boys that I remembered, yeah. his sons. Uh -huh. Well, and there was an Ephraim Hickson. That some of them was buried up All there. the way up till the 1960s, and that was one of his sons, I believe. Well, there's a... There was a Marion and uh, and a Milt. Mm -hmm. Milt Hickson, I've worked with him. Yeah, well, I saw Marion's uh, gravestone out there. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. But Milt's, I'm very probably here in Mitchell, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but now, Timothy Hickson had probably died before you were born or when you were real young. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. But still, I, I can remember some of his some of those children. Was their place still there uh, when you were young, near the village, or had it already? Oh, it was already so, gone. I never remembered anything about that down there. Yeah. You know? Of course, when they built that lake in there, it changed the thing. Sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'd say most of it's underwater. Yeah. But at one time, he'd had a, a grist mill, a small one. And yeah. I've just been trying to find some information about it. Well, I don't know. I just saw it just here, say, with it. Yeah. But now your grandfather, George Washington Hamer, where was it that he lived? Now the one picture that we looked at up here, was that the home that he had, the one with the windmill? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That and that's back there. the one with the line drive. I don't know who built that, whether he had it, uh, whether he had it built or, mm -hmm. or what, because uh, that's as far back as I can remember, is that house looks pretty much like it did. Now do you remember much of him, or did he? Died oh yes, quite a little, and uh, not too much either. I was only let's see, I was well, I wasn't. I was uh, maybe eight or ten years old when he died. I don't mm -hmm. remember now. Mm -hmm. I can remember going to the cemetery mm -hmm. to his funeral, and my my grandmother then lived several years. At oh. all. And she went ahead and lived in that house while you were growing up. Oh yes. With your father Albert. Yeah. And uh, and then that house is still standing. That interests yeah. me. That's something. Uh, well, everything in that house, I guess, is uh, uh. yellow poplar about. Uh huh. Any more than there's a stairway in there that they say the the uh, the railing mm -hmm. to this stairway that went up there was. Uh, well, what kind of wood is it? I don't know now. Somebody painted it. And somebody was talking about putting paint over it. Shouldn't have been painted. No. Oh, I see. But I, I, I don't remember the name of it. Just what it is now. Oh. But, uh, but it was always home to me down there. I stayed there yeah. for, uh, nearly two years with my grandmother uh -huh. when I was in that seventh and eighth grade, I was going up there to the post uh -huh. other schoolhouse then. Uh -huh. Now, do you remember any stories that they told about the village or, because uh, they would have lived in the village in their younger days, I assume. Oh, yes. Uncle, now this Uncle Frank was uh -huh. the last hammer that I know of that ever claimed to be born down there. Mm -hmm. It was he and a cousin mm -hmm. that they were both born down there. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, I think they were just they were they were cousins themselves, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them was uh, we always called her Aunt Ned, mm -hmm. and all. And uh, right. 
she was, uh, well, she got to be a loner, just uh, was just part of the family it was kind of on her own and all. Yeah. And, and she lived with us part of the time. And, mm. and even after I got married, I helped take care of her some, uh -huh. lived with me. But she's buried there in the, in the cemetery. Yeah. Of course, we're wanting to get out in the cemetery. We can arrange a day next week because there's a lot of stuff I want to ask, and you're probably the only one well, that would even know about it. And when I was, uh, well, back when I don't know you ever heard of uh, this girl that was the, oh, uh, down at the park. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she used to give these tours. Mm -hmm. About every two weeks in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. and if, I, gray, maybe. if I happen to just happen to come in when yeah. that's going on, uh -huh. she just motions me to come on <laughs> over. There. Well, I might do the same thing. <laughs> she said she just turned over to me. And, yeah. Well, it'd be maybe twenty people or something. Like, uh -huh. They could ask you questions. All so, right. I'd try to answer them. Maybe. You probably remembered a lot of those uh -huh. things firsthand. And, uh, there were several. Uh, graves that I had been told had been moved from uh, a place near Bono on a yeah. farm, the Boy, Fitzpatrick's, I about that. and I heard you were in on that. I sure was. Now yeah. that was uh, Hugh Hamer's father-in-law and his father, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. The Fitzpatrick's. Yeah, there's a Thomas Hamer, which Thomas was Hamer his and father. And then the Fitzpatrick's. Okay. And they were buried in Bono just on a, a farm, or? Uh, no, they was in a, it was a uh, I think uh, there was evidently about a, uh, about an acre of land, just mm -hmm. the woods, just like mm -hmm. it is out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, I have to go back to this Uncle Frank of mine. Mm -hmm. I told you he was a... Uh, Mortician. Yeah, no. Well, he drove over to my house one time. Mm -hmm. he, he always lived in Bedford after he got away from home. But he come over there, and I don't remember just where we were living at the time. See, I kind of moved around. You know, I was renting farms, and farming's about all I knew, you know, mm -hmm. and all. And he said, uh, uh, he says, I've got it in my mind that some of the hammers, my, my grandparents is what he said, are buried up around Bono someplace. Mm -hmm. He says, do you know anything about it? And I said, no. Mm -hmm. He said, do you know anybody in Bono? I said, yes. There's one old man over there that's got a store, a little store up there. Well, he says, let's go and talk to him. Well, Uncle Frank had an automobile then I didn't have. We drove up there and he told us where this cemetery was. Well, when he told me where it was, uh, I knew how to get there. You you drove about a half mile just down through some fields. It's a dirt road. It's black talk now. But anyway, the people that lived there was people that I happened to know, mm -hmm. you know, just barely. So we drove over there and asked them where it was, and they says, "Yeah, it's right that woods right over there. There was a nice field in there." They says, "You just go right across this field. It won't hurt anything." We went over there. You know, we just, Uncle Frank just walked down in there about 25 or 30 feet and walked right to them monuments. And there was three monuments there. Just right out there at the park now. Right. Well, he got interested then after we found them. He took a wire brush with him uh -huh. so he could brush off. But they, they was all readable. We got out and just, just growed up, just uh, right. digging my arm right out of the graves. No telling how long they've been buried there, you know. But well, it was on them stones. But anyway, he got interested then in, uh, in moving them. Uh -huh. Well, that was uh, some work to do and so on. You had to get actually go to, through the State Board of Health mm -hmm. to get permission. Well, he got it. And then uh, it, uh, uh, I had a brother then, a uh, brother in law, mm -hmm. that lived right up there in that neighborhood. He knew, but I don't think he'd ever seen them at the cemetery, but I hadn't either. But, you know. but anyway, after we got all this permit, why, 
uh, this mother-in-law had a truck. I didn't have, I just had a car then. And we hired two men that I think had been kind of their business, digging graves and things. And they, we went over there, and Uncle Frank had made uh, three boxes. Mm -hmm. of, well, he said big enough to take in a leg bone or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. He says, uh, and he made them out of some kind of material that would last, you know. And he, uh, after, after we got the arrangements all made, he says, you take them up there. He says, now, you're not going to find anything, I don't think. But he says, let's dig to the bottom, bottom of one grave. He wasn't going to come over there, either, but Orrin, my brother-in-law, and we had these two men, and uh, we all went to digging. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, by golly, it wasn't very long and somebody was down there to the skeleton. Huh. Well, that slowed it, the whole thing up right then. Yeah. And we dug out, we dug out three skeletons. But they, they was, well, hardly say that either. Uh -huh. You just touch them, they crumble. Uh -huh. You had to hand them off easy. There wasn't anything left of a box? No, not a thing. The only thing I ever got, and I could show it to you, a little piece of black cloth and kind of a screw. My. It looked like it might have been a kind of a screw nail or something. Uh -huh. Just about that much is everything we ever found. Of course, we got looking pretty close uh -huh. after we got into it. Uh -huh. But we done it all that day. We just was able to dig them out and rebox them. We went ahead and got all the coffee and rice and just put bones in each box of mm -hmm. one of the, what was left of them, mm -hmm. and, uh, and kept them separate. And, and then we'd come down to the park, and we'd already picked this place out where we was going to set them. Mm -hmm. and just got to work. We, we done the whole thing. Did you day. use the same stone that was in Bono, or did you make a new stone? No, it was original, the whole thing. Okay, so those are the original stones. Foot stones and everything. My. Now there's one of them, I don't know whether they've got around to it yet, needs to be straightened up with, uh, real well. See, there, you yeah. know where my lot is out there? You yeah. Know? Well, I, I'm just pretty close to that. Right, it's right next to that. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, I've been curious about that ever since I... Well, I heard it. That's that's all of it. And Orrin, I never thought much about it. My brother, uh, my brother-in-law says I don't want to ever get tied into anything like this again. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Uh, it didn't affect me the fact that was my great-grandparents, both mm -hmm. all three of them were. You see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was great, great. Well, it was one Hamer and two Fitzpatricks. Wasn't yes. It? Uh -huh. Okay. Well. Thomas Hamer there had been a great great grandfather. Now Thomas Hamer's wife wasn't buried there. No, okay. we never could find out. Um, Going back, it's been in my mind it could be up there, close to Cincinnati, because you see they come from New York down to here through mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. and that being Hamersville up there, yeah, she might have died, and that, that might have been the start of it. The whole thing, you don't know. Might have been the reason uh, Robert Bruce later on went back. If there yeah. was still some connections I there. I don't know. Things, uh, but I was always glad of it and so on. I've got, kind of tried to look after those uh, stones and uh, all. But, uh, now, there was another family that I kind of been curious about that I found their stones and found bits and pieces about them, and that was a Cleveland family that lived in that area. Do you remember any of them? Cleveland? Uh-huh. No, I don't. I was thinking he was a Cooper, but there's quite a few stones in the cemetery, but the thing that interested me is several of the stones don't have death dates, so it led me to believe that maybe they had lived there and, and moved off before they died. Well, so I didn't know if you I, I don't know anything about it. Now, Uncle Henry is, uh, I don't know whether you remember his stone or not, he's just right, just off in the other corner of my lot there. It's got a Masonic emblem up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Well, that was Uncle Henry. Now, I remember Uncle Henry real well. See, he was Hugh's oldest boy. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and you he, remember him? Oh, yes, Uncle oh. Henry do, because uh, when my grandfather was sick, uh -huh. He lived, he, he got away from down there. He, he spent a lot of his time out in the west someplace. Mm -hmm. I don't know just where, Kansas or someplace 
Uh, anyway, he came back when Uncle, uh, when Grandpa George got that and lived down there and, well, helped him there on the mm -hmm. farm and all. And then when uh, Grandpa died, why well, he went, he went right out here to live with his, uh, well, I just, of course, I just left my grandmother down there mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't want them to just live together. But, so uh, he had a sister then out just north of town out here. Mm -hmm. So he he come out there and spent the rest of his life wow. with her. Yeah. And she was a burden. Okay. Yeah. Now, what was the relationship there between them? He was her brother? Yeah, they sister. were brother and sister. Did she marry a Burton then? And she married a Burton before. Before Burton was dead when he came over here, I think. Okay. But she had two daughters. That, mm -hmm. the, the three of them lived together out there. Do you remember which Burton that was? Oh. I was, we were at Burton Cemetery the other day, and they married into the Turley family. Yeah. There was a Joe Burton that married the wives of Turley. And then I read some things where the Hamer family was related to the Burtons. And well, that was this family right out here. And okay. That home's still out there, but uh, mm -hmm. I think it's been repaired or rebuilt or something. But uh, okay, so one of the daughters of Hugh Hamer married a Burton. Yeah. I'll have to. But Uncle Henry, now he right. lived with us, uh, as I say, a while. But uh, we, my dad then was living in a, just his own house that he built and just didn't have the room. There was four of us mm -hmm. kids and all. And, and all we hated it for him to have to go someplace. But now he was a great horse man. He was, mm. I guess that's where well my grandfather was. Yeah. Uh, my they, uh, he just always had the best horses in the, in the country. And uh, I think I've inherited that because I've been a horse lover. Uh -huh. I've owned some good ones in the cell. Right. But uh, Uncle Henry, though, he was, he liked to talk about breaking the horses and, uh -huh. and uh, the oxen, too, mm -hmm. and how many it took to get that loads of stuff up out of the holler. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Someone uh, had talked about that one time, how many oxen it took to get up the hill. I think they put three yoke, and that was about okay. six, you know. Six oxen. But maybe yeah. eight, I don't know. Well, Hugh Hamer was, had a reputation for being quite a horseman and well, also I having think, big yeah. teams of oxen. One night, uh, I was helping bale some straw out north of town here a few years ago and something come up about my grandpa. And it's, uh, this fellow, he was an older man a lot than I was. He says, uh, George Hamer knew more about a horse than anybody ever knew. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess he did, I don't know. I got know, it from his old, father. He had a saddle horse that uh, I uh, always in my life wanted one as nice and good as she was, but uh, I never got that good. I finally had one or two, but they never was like she was. Of course, when you were young, you probably had to uh, yeah. use horses for transportation a lot. Yeah. Because uh, I would say you were probably near middle age before automobiles really were popular. Well, yes. Born in 1896, is that right? Or yeah, yeah. Then, uh, then you had several years I've before got cars to, came around. I've got a couple of months to go now, and I'm going to be <laughs> another year. Good. Well, do you remember any other stories about the village in its early days, uh, around the time it was being restored as a park? Some of the things that happened then. I'm real curious. Oh, about not that. really. I we were just interested in. I say we'd go up there even after they uh, got it rebuilt and got to go on. We'd still always like to go up there. Yeah. yeah. I had heard that uh, in the 20s there had been an, an automobile accident or something up the top of the hill above Hamer Cave where that road is and a car had went over the edge. Do you remember anything about that? I remember a boy went over that on a bicycle. On a bicycle. I don't remember a car ever going. He, he I think he wound up through down there at the Hamer Cave. My goodness! You know, did he kill him? Or? No, no, no. He lived to be a prof 
professor up at Purdue. Oh, my. <laughs> His dad was his teacher, uh -huh. and this boy, I think, was a, quite a good student and everything, because mm -hmm. he just never done anything on the go to school. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, the pumping station that's there now, I assume was built later on, wasn't it? The one that's by the Hamer Cave? Well, Or was there I, a station there? Or? It was built, uh, of course, this is about as soon as Lehigh took it over. Okay. Of course. <laughs> Lehigh built that first mill out here just about the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. you know? So they were pumping water that early. <coughs> well, I imagine, you know, I remember the, you see, there was a, they had a different system. They got, of course, that's electric now. Yeah. But then, back then, it was compressed air. Well, I've wondered about that. That's the way they put that, uh, and ever so often, see, they laid this uh, uh, pipeline I guess they had to nearly follow the road mm -hmm. because some of it was along the road, mm -hmm. and there was a, there was a, I don't know just I never did understand how it worked, but uh, anyway it was compressed air. They made the they made the air up there at the mill or out here at the mill, wow. and uh, it was right. pumped out there. But every so often in the, in that line mm -hmm. there was a. Well, I don't know what I want to say. Uh, it was a relief tie or okay. something. Yeah. It'd make a little hissing sign and, and shoot maybe a little water up. Uh, hmm. they, and some of it was right along the road. Mm -hmm. And that's how you knew it was there. Yeah. And that'd scare a horse to death. Oh, it, my. If it just happened to be there and it'd done that, it made a little noise, you know, and uh -huh. shoot some water about. Release air. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, yeah. that was relief there or something. Mm -hmm. Now that, of course, that was uh, that went along, oh, many years I think, mm -hmm. even before they electrified the thing, mm -hmm. and they got to making their own electricity out there. And mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. What about the early days when the park was first restored? Do you remember much about the construction that went on there, or, uh, of course, the CCC period? We're going to probably spend a lot of time looking into that, but even before that. Do you remember any of the men, or did you know very many of them that worked on the mill and the buildings? Well, yes, I knew some of them and all. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a fellow that's here in town, I, I don't see him very often, but he helped build that last, had a whole lot to do with that building, that last wheel down there. And that's Lawrence Lawyer? Yeah, Lawrence Lawyer, yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. And not only that, but he, they reached they rebuilt that once, you know, and put that new, mm -hmm. the big log in there. Yeah. The, the wheel, the whole thing, you know. Now, when they first redid it, it had a shaft in it, didn't it? Or I don't know. I suppose it yeah. did. Yeah. They just replaced it in the 50s. Yeah. Was the fence still there uh, when you were young, before they restored it, or did they add the fence? With the stone fence there the along the road? The stone fence had been there a long time. Okay, so it was there even before yeah. it became a park. Yeah. How about the fence around the garden? Do you remember was that added or? I don't know. There was some there, but I don't know. I, I think they was mm -hmm. some of them rebuilt and, mm -hmm. and so on. And there, there was some. Uh, see that fence they built up there at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know whether you knew any, had heard anything about that or not. Well, I've been curious about those stone pillars at the cemetery. Uh, just what exactly they were. Oh, you mean the post that went yeah, through around? Yeah, right. Well, I, I laid that on to my dad. He did that? Uh, back in the years before uh, they even done anything down at the park, you might uh -huh. say. We didn't know it was going, ever going to be a park. Uh -huh. But my dad, had, uh, it, he just kind of inherited the, the care of the cemetery up there. Uh -huh. Every, about once or twice a year, he'd get kind of a crowd together, three right. or four men, and mm -hmm. they'd give it a good cleaning mm -hmm. and all. And uh, then they built a, this wire fence around it. Mm -hmm. Well, then when, the, when Lehigh got, or Mitchell State got a hold of it, why, uh, they tried to kind of keep that fence up, mm -hmm. that wire fence, and uh, they, uh, I don't know why they were interested in it at the time, right at the time, but uh, 
when uh, I got to kind of looking after it out there some myself after my dad. See, my dad died before it was ever a park, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he kind of had it in his head maybe. Uh, he never talked it to me, but maybe he did to my mother about that might be in one of these abandoned cemeteries, just like we moved them people out of, you know. Yeah. But uh, we buried him in Mitchell out here. I was curious why he wasn't buried there. Well, that was uh, one thing. Is since his, his father was his, there. His own idea about it. You know? mm -hmm. But uh, getting back to those stone poles, mm -hmm. I'm sure he set them. Did they have fence connected to them at one yeah, time? Yeah, sure. Was it just a wire fence? It was just a wire fence. Uh -huh. And uh, they, they kept the back of it back there. They, it was just a woven wire farm fence mm -hmm. with a barbed wire on top. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they would, uh, on the back side back there, mm -hmm. they would cut a hole down in that mm -hmm. uh, woven wire mm -hmm. and just make a place they could kind of crawl through. Yeah. They just would rather do that than come around in front. Right. You know. Well, I went out there one time and I found uh, they had uh, <laughs> this barbed wire on top was wired to the other just temporarily here and there. Mm -hmm. And they'd mashed the wire down where they could crawl over it and all. Mm -hmm. I spent a day out there one time with some bailing wire mm -hmm. and I straightened that up and wired it to the mm -hmm. other. Well, that lasted a while, yeah. but they, they, they kept just getting in there. Right. And then, but, my dad, I'm sure that stone post was there then. Mm -hmm. So when when Billy come here, mm -hmm. and uh, you no, know, is before Billy come here, the, the man that was the boss out there then, they call him the superintendent. They call him a mm -hmm. workman. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of his See, name. Phil right. Pot was one of the. Huh? Phil Pot was one that was there. Uh, uh, Weber. Well, well. Anyway, uh, there wasn't anybody, everybody out there that was against it. We mm -hmm. we did talk about that rock fence. My my wife got real interested in it. Mm -hmm. and done some correspondence with some people and so on. And uh, oh, but uh, you, you just you, you just couldn't keep them out. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we finally got the Well, it was, there was somebody, I, I attended a meeting right over at the schoolhouse one, one evening, and uh, there was some state, some of the state officials down here. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what it was for, but I went, and I got to talking to them, to somebody that was, whoever was the, the park superintendent then uh, out there, and I, I was telling him then about the fence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, about the, getting a rock fence. Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't see why you can't get them. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, you can go over to bed and get all that stone gift to you to. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I said, we don't want that kind. I said, we want like this down there in the village. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. but, but the others, was some of the others that was had been in there, they just wouldn't talk about it. He says, oh, you're just you're just wasting your time fooling with that. Yeah. But, but we never quit. My yeah. wife and I and talked to us and she wrote some letters to some different people uh -huh. and so on. Phil Pot. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, Phil Pot was one of the earlier right. superintendents. He he was a fellow that uh, that wasn't against it. Mm -hmm. Well, we went to talking to him a whole lot, or I did then, mm -hmm. got real well acquainted with him. And finally, one time, I didn't know. He said, we'll get it some of these times. But I don't know how long I drug around. But finally, one day he says, Frank, he says, we're going to get that that rock fence. Mm -hmm. Well, I couldn't hardly believe it. It was yeah. just too good. Uh -huh. And then we talked about where we wanted it and uh -huh. so on. And I said, well, you want it on the line out there, on the road. You know? mm -hmm. So... Uh, I went out there one day, I, I didn't, I still didn't believe it. Went out there and turned that and already dug the ditch then right. for the footing. Oh, it looks beautiful. And it's, 
and they filled out all in with crushed stone. Uh -huh. And all. Well, from then on, they just went to mm -hmm. hauling, hauling stone from the village down there, up there. Mm -hmm. you know? right. Now, nearly all that that they hauled out of there was over there along the woods. It wasn't okay. really out of the village down uh -huh. there. I you see. Know? Just some they picked but up. But it took a lot of it, I'll tell you. Oh, I can imagine. So, uh, when I finally got that all done, why, well, I, I think another time I was out there and says, uh, Frank, I'm going to get a good fence around the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, they built that fence. Well, when they, when they told me what he's going to do, I says, listen, if you're going to do that, go ahead and use those stone posts. Mm -hmm. Just leave them in there. I says, I'm, I'm just sure my dad put them in there. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, okay. Well, when they built it, they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they built them about a foot back from it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I never did know just why they did that. It might be just the type of thing. So uh, we never did, and there was one of them ever, mm -hmm. I think one of them broke it or something one time. Yeah. But uh, when Billy and I then finally got together on putting something to protect, protect my lot down there, uh -huh. why, uh, well, I first asked Billy, see, I couldn't, I couldn't keep the thing on my lot, uh -huh. just bare ground. See, I, I'm just, I say I've got the worst lot out there yeah. because it got all the traffic. Yeah. They just come through there and cut, cut across that. They mm -hmm. never looked at that big stone of mine. But yeah. anyway, uh, I, uh, I told him that. I said, Billy, I'd like to put up something just for a temporary thing along there, see if it would work. Mm -hmm. He said, well, go ahead and do what you want to. Well, I... Uh, I first had it in mind to put a board or something through there. Mm -hmm. I says, I believe I'll put a, about an inch pipe mm -hmm. across that, just there, that one side. But I says, I need to, uh, some posts to put it to. Mm -hmm. I says, I've never wanted them to use any of those posts, but I says, this is a, something else. Mm -hmm. I says, uh, let's set, uh, I guess it was, uh, no, maybe we just set wooden posts for that thing. Anyway, I put up the pipe. Mm -hmm. He said, well, go ahead and do it. But he says, I, I don't believe it'll work. Mm -hmm. Well, it did. Mm -hmm. It worked. I'd go out there once in a while, and, but it wasn't a, it was about three-quarter pipe. Somebody had tried to mash it down or something. Yeah. It'd be bent right in the middle, like, and all. Well, I could take a hold of it and straighten it and mm -hmm. pull it up. But they, they never did go across the lot anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I kept it in mind then. Billy and I got to talk about it again one day, and I said, "What?" He he didn't. He says, "I'd like to stay away from wood." Mm -hmm. He says, "Let's put up something that's." Mm -hmm. that, he said, a, a, "A wood fence around that wouldn't look very good for the right. and all." So uh, I said, "What about a chain?" Well, he got some books out, and he, we looked at it, and got some prices and so on. And, and I said, uh, I, I, I says, I, I believe that's all right. And he said, Well, would you furnish the chain? I says, Yes. He says, We'll do the rest. Hmm. So uh, I uh, come in here and I bought the. Uh, uh, let's see if it's. Uh, what size was it? There's a little heavier chain we've got out there now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, it's anyway. been replaced. Uh, yeah, and then he and he set the the, the post. You yeah. know, well this chain was so heavy enough that it kind of pulled those uh, posts up, posts out of line. Oh. Just it was it, it was heavy chain, mm -hmm. heavier than it needed to be, mm -hmm. and all. It cost me eighty dollars. You know, mm -hmm. I bought it right here in town. Mm -hmm. And I had a few lengths left and all, and uh, but it, it it looked all right and mm -hmm. and, and all, but it kind of caused them posts to pull over. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. Billy says we can fix that, so he 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 dug around them and set them in concrete. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that done that then. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was getting ready. I my daughter lives in St. Louis, and I was going to go out there at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I went out there just before I went to Christmas and all. Or to St. Louis, and uh, 
everything was all right. I think I took some flowers out there or something. And I went out. I was going out there about a week and to come home. And I went right out there when I got home to mm -hmm. do something. That chain was all gone. Mm -hmm. and, and some of those fasteners had been broken. Mm -hmm. Some of them had pried them open. Some of them got that chain off. Took the chain. Billy, didn't anybody know about it? So yeah, I, 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 I <coughs> hunted up Billy and told him about it. Mm -hmm. Billy, he had a fit about it. He said, we'll try our, our best to see if we can't do something. But they never did. They never mm -hmm. could yeah. pin it on to anybody. Right. And I said, well, we've got it all fixed. I says, I'll buy another chain. He said, right. well, we'll put it up. Right. You know? So it, this one has stayed yeah. now. It's been there. Yeah, we just painted it about two weeks ago. Yeah, I know it was uh, needing painting. Yeah, we bad. painted it black yeah. so it wouldn't get rusty. I don't know who done that well. painting. Well, I got together with the man that's doing some work there and uh -huh. it. Uh, now, since the next time we do an interview, we're going to be at the park itself, and I'd like to go to the cemetery, maybe go to the mill uh, or the mill office. But since we're at your house, this might be an opportune time if you had any pictures that we could take a look at. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed there was one here, and I've been kind of curious because it seems like I've seen this before, and uh, I was. Wonder just exactly. I assume the one here is your wife. That's my wife. Yeah. On That's the right. Uh, when she died, we had an awful time trying to find a picture that uh, we liked that had some color to it. Yeah. But uh, uh -huh. we had all all kind of snapshots and things. Uh huh. But that's uh, that's who it is. She was an old time school teacher in the one room schools. Yeah, she taught uh, her first two skiers mm -hmm. out there at the park. Turley School. Oh, at the Turley Schoolhouse. Yeah, at the Turley School. Oh, goodness. Now, where did that sit? You don't know where that Turley Schoolhouse was? Was that over at the uh, Oak Ridge area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. About up there. And then later on, they put the CCC camp. Yeah. The same area. Well, yes. But that, uh, right up there, well, there's a restroom back up there. Mm -hmm. That's awful close to where the school was. Okay. Uh, right. And you see the road. 60 come right by it there. Okay. Highway 60 uh -huh. come right come right in through there and uh, mm -hmm. and went on just where it is. Was the last teacher that was there, or did that continue on? No, after? no. It, uh, I don't. Uh, it, it continued a while. Now, who are the folks well, in the other picture? <laughs> that's my brother and sister. That's Priscilla. Did you meet Priscilla? Yeah, I've met Priscilla. That's her, and this is John. That's John. My goodness. And that's old Dan. That's the dog that, uh, uh. that <laughs> well, uh, that there was one just like him. Huh. He was he was awful big. Uh -huh. And just, uh, that was on a little porch there. Uh -huh. And uh, they'd let him in the house once in a while and all. But uh, if somebody that was rode right on down here where he is yet today, uh -huh. it's Somebody stopped and got out of the car down there. He might kind of go down that way and bark a little, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't have hit anybody. Mm -hmm. But they could let a half a dozen kids uh -huh. get him in a room and and just do anything to him. Yeah, that was mean. Wow. And uh, uh, he never done anything. If it got too bad for him, he'd just get up, uh -huh. and let him fall over. <laughs> And he'd lay down someplace oh, else, and uh, all he did, we just had him until he died, and uh, he he get out and hunt himself, uh -huh. come carrying in a crown hog or something, uh -huh. and uh, as I say, he's just a big pet, mm -hmm. and everybody in the neighborhood knew him, uh -huh. who's uh, yeah, uh, because he'd get out and visit around, <laughs> but nobody knew. Do you have him. any other pictures? I just. Uh, this happened to be here is why it caught my attention. Well, that's all right. And, uh, well, but, uh, but sometimes a picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> and uh, Well, that's my dad and mother back there. Okay. Uh, Which one's in here? No. The, oh. the little folding picture. Right okay. There. I don't know if we'll pick that up or not, but we'll try. Well, so that would be Albert there on the left. Yeah. That's my mother, Alma. Alma. Yeah. She's and, the mother of these kids here. Now, your father died back in the 20s? 
Yeah, let's see it. Before the park. Oh no, 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 no! It was. Uh, uh, let's see. It. I don't know. It was up around fifty, fifty-six. No, he was sixty, fifty-six years old. Oh, so the park was already open and restored. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Well, yes, it had been opened up, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a state park then. Oh, okay. It was still just. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I'm telling that right or not, no. But he, he never saw it restored. Okay. If he had, then... Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. It would have been a great thing for him, I'm uh, sure. Yes, if anybody in the world could have... Uh, uh -huh. uh, could enjoy it, it would have been him. With, I mean, what it is today or what... Well, what I'm the, sure he would have had a lot of stories to tell, too. That was before he was even talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, right. but now she must have lived quite a young, few years see. later. Huh? She must have lived quite a few years later because that's in color. Yeah. yeah. Well, as I say, Dad was fifty-six. I think I'm right about it. Uh -huh. My mother was eighty-nine. Uh -huh. She lived several years. My goodness. Yeah. That's something. Is this your wife here beside it? That's a picture. No, that's my daughter. Oh. Okay. About a, that's probably about a high school picture. Oh. That's her and her. Oh, the same picture on the wall. Yeah. And then your son, who was killed during the war, World War Two. Yeah. Uh -huh. I read that on the uh, on the grave marker. Yeah. He was a bomber pilot. My flying over Germany. If he had lived, we'd have probably stayed on that Jenkins farm down there. Uh huh. Because. Uh, he liked the farm, and, uh -huh. and that was the best thing we'd ever got into, that big farm and all, we uh -huh. got to work. Yeah. But the last talk I ever had with him, uh -huh. well, I, I was mowing some alfalfa, uh -huh. and he was, somebody was taking him to the depot then to go to Chicago. Uh -huh. He'd already done his training and all that was, well, he'd, al he'd already been out uh, in the West someplace. Idaho or someplace, uh, uh, just a week or two for some special training. But anyway, he stopped and we had a little talk. And uh, uh, he said, uh, I still like the farm. And I said, well, uh, there's enough here for both of us. I said, as long as uh, Jenkins own it, and as long as we do the right thing, mm -hmm. we can go ahead. And I said, I'll try to take care of it. When you get home, mm -hmm. well, that didn't happen. So uh, I just uh, just had to depend on hired help from then on, and uh, mm -hmm. I uh, just about worked myself there. Mm -hmm. That's when we finally got the, our own place up here. That homestead, yeah. Oh, and, uh, I, I feel like if, uh, well, that's. Uh, that's just the last kind of the way we talked, the last mm -hmm. time I talked with him. So, mm -hmm. right. uh, he was real enthused over the flying. And mm -hmm. uh, he done a lot of this bomber training. Mm -hmm. He was actually trained. He thought he was going to be a regular fighter pilot. Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, but they made a bomber pilot out of him and all. And they had him, he was out in Idaho, and I, I guess pretty rough country. Mm -hmm. And he said they'd done a lot of flying, and right up in uh, canyon country, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said it looked like it was dangerous a place they could ever pick up. Well, somebody was looking ahead on it, because they went over there in Italy and done the same thing. Man. Just, they were just in, mm -hmm. uh, done most of their flying right out of the, mm -hmm. out of the uh, big, Mountain country, you know. Right. Uh, and, uh, see, he uh, he was on his 36th mission when he died. 36th uh, mission. He flew. Wow. Yeah, every one of them was a war thing. And that, if I remember the date, was right at the very end, wasn't it? Yeah. The war was almost over. Yeah. Well, no. Did you have any other pictures uh, uh, of the Hamers, your grandfather, or? 
any of Hugh Hamer. I know we have the pictures up here of Hugh Hamer and his wife that probably are the best copies of those portraits that burned that you were telling me about. Well, I don't have any of that, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I've got a few few pictures. Of, I, I've got a good picture of this uh, mm -hmm. the home place out there mm -hmm. and some things of, uh, of Uncle Frank. And mm -hmm. I'll get them if, yeah, if you would a, mind. I think in the big envelope back here. Okay. Okay. I'll get up and cut it over the wall a little bit. I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> I've got plenty of time now. <laughs> well, then this is your immediate family with your one daughter and her husband and two sons yeah. and their wives. Yeah. Okay, and then would that be your... Grandchildren or great grandchildren? Great grandchildren. That's great grandchildren. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, and then this is your other son that you were telling us about that was in World War II. Yeah, that's yeah. And this is probably a picture or a photograph that they took before he went yeah. overseas. Yeah, I've got one just like it sits on my dresser in there, and and then yeah. I've got another of him. Uh, he had one year in Purdue. Oh. And. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how he come to do it, but uh, mm -hmm. he had a nice picture taken up there at Purdue, just uh -huh. you know, dressed up and so on. Well, and, uh, and then I picked up another photograph, and let me just kind of set these aside, and then we'll put them back up carefully. And this is uh, you and your brothers and sisters, I assume. No. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's that's another Hugh Hammer. Okay. And we're all cousins there. Okay, this is you. This is your brother John. Yeah, I just taken, yeah, John. Georgia. Georgia and Priscilla. Priscilla. And then your cousin. That was taken two years ago uh -huh. at the Hammer reunion. Okay. You see, we was all dressed. They tried to get us old time dress. And yeah. Stuff like that. Um, uh, now, how is Hugh related to you? This is Hugh. Hugh? Uh, well, he was Ralph's son. And Ralph was your father's brother. Yeah, my okay. uncle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, you see, uh, Lee Ann. Mm -hmm. Is now, what relation I? I'll tell you this. You can tell me what relation okay. I am to Lee Ann. Okay. She's a granddaughter of my my cousin. Okay. I, I say we're about three or four cousins. That would be about right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and he would be uh, he was a grandson of George Washington Hamer also. Yeah, then. yeah, just the same as I was. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. He was Uncle Ralph's boy. Uncle Ralph had two children. Okay. But Hugh's, Hugh's mother's been dead. And he lives in New York and now. Hugh's, Hugh's still living. He's, uh, mm -hmm. he's 81 or 2, someplace along there. Mine. So you know the big monument down there? It's got the yeah. circle of hearts on it. Right. See? Well, that's his wife. It's buried there, Golda. Golda, yeah. And a place for you. Okay, now I've seen that, but I didn't realize that that was well, that's good. for them. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see if we You can... never cared very much about farming. He got into uh -huh. something else. And uh -huh. Finally wound up a real good job. Uh -huh. He was a, a repairman for cash registers. Oh. It's complicated outfit. Yeah. And he got a job at uh, Macy's store in New York. My goodness. And uh, My spent his whole life. Well, up there. I wonder how he ended up in New York. So. Well, <laughs> now this is, uh, you were telling me just a second ago, and then we stopped. Mm -hmm. This is the family farm. Yeah, that's my grandpa's. Okay, this is the one that you were born and grow, grew yeah, up in. Yeah. That, that had the that's windmill. The, that's the second barn. That there that burned. Okay. And all. Okay. And, and this is the one that had the windmill next to it yeah, and the water yeah. storage tank there. And, and it's there? Uh, yeah, you can kind of see it in the background. Well, I figure this is an older picture uh -huh. than the one she made the picture off of. I okay. believe it's a little. Well, the house looks in much better condition in this picture. So. Well, that's what I was arguing about. See, there's no porch there. Yeah, you're right. You see, that's older than. 
that's older than that uh -huh. porch is built after this uh -huh. picture yeah. was made. And the house looks a little bit more ran down in the, yeah. the newer mm -hmm. picture. So now their first picture, or their first barn over there, burned and I think uh, burned up everything they had. Eleven had the horses mm. and all. Right. And then our grandpa had that barn built. Mm -hmm. That was one of the finest barns I ever seen. Right. It, it was all yellow poplar. Mm -hmm. Boards that wide, about an inch and a quarter thick, right. and all. And I was, my son uh -huh. had some ear trouble. We'd been to Bedford to a doctor over there. In fact, he, he operated on his back there and all. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we were on our way home. We that time we come. Have you heard of Booty? Yeah. yeah. Well, we come through. We didn't come right through Booty. But we come over a hill over there, about a mile uh -huh. from the river, and you could look down there, across there. You was looking the other way, but you could see that whole valley in there. Uh -huh. Well, just we just had got topped over the hill there. Uh -huh. I had a Model T Ford, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I seen that barn on fire. Oh my! And oh. <laughs> let's see, that don't show the. There was another building in there between them. Uh -huh. Uh, we call it this kind of a machine shop, what mm -hmm. it was. And, uh, and I, of course, I went to driving pretty hard then, mm -hmm. and all, but I could just see it was burning so big, that, and saw that other one, just uh, saw the roof begin to catch fire. Mm -hmm. time we got there, it was all gone. It was still ashes and still oh, smoking. Goodness. But here's the thing that's been in my mind ever since. Uh, Uncle Ralph owned that then, mm -hmm. and he was working at the, uh, the pump station for the city down there mm -hmm. and all. And I was, well, he and my dad had owned a, some mm -hmm. property together, mm -hmm. machinery and stuff like that. Well, it, everything down there was, would burned up and all. And, uh, uh, and I thought since then, I, I was in and out down there nearly every week. Mm -hmm. uh, because we both used the same machinery and things, yeah. you know. And I thought since that, how glad I was that I wasn't even at home that day. Mm -hmm. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, suppose I'd have been down there and done something, and, and before the day was over, that had all happened. Right. Yeah. You know. So imagine what I've always felt pretty good about this. Right. Because somebody could have just accused you mm -hmm. of it, you know. And, I was sure well, it's fortunate that you had a photograph before that happened, and, and to so show what it looked like beforehand. Yeah. Let me see here. Now that's uh, this is. No, that's in town. That's in okay. city. That's uh, in city of Mitchell or Bedford. Bedford, Uncle Frank's. That's where Uncle Frank lived. Is Uncle Frank the one in the corner? Well, let's see. No. There's Uncle Frank. There's Uncle Henry. Okay. And here's my dad. Right there. Okay. My mother. So turn around where they can see it. Okay, that would be Uncle Henry on the end yeah. with the beard. He's tall. Okay. And Uncle Frank. Yeah. Which actually would have been Henry's nephew. Yeah. Uncle. And then your dad, which would have been another yeah. nephew of Henry. And Uncle Henry was the son of Hugh Hamer, wasn't he? Yes. Okay. And then uh, That's the kids right along there. George is in there. She wouldn't have been very old. Or, you know. Are you in the picture? Yes. Yes. That's I'm. I'm the the big boy here someplace. Right here. Right there, my Uncle Henry. Yeah, probably yeah. ten or eleven years old. <laughs> my. Yeah, you were dressed pretty snazzy. It looks like. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now is this near where the funeral home was? Uh, that was what? Is this near the funeral home that he operated? Well, no. This was out on West 14th Street. Okay. And the funeral home was clear downtown on the... On the okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now this next one looks like a first aid station. Uh, this picture. Oh, that was down here at the quarry. Uh, okay. Lehigh Quarry. All right. uh, that was a lime. It was Lehigh Lime Company. Mm -hmm. uh, they, that was a lime country. Or, Lime kills down there, mm -hmm. and right close to it now is where they're getting the stone for the cement. They had two quarries down there. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Lehigh owned them both. They always call this one the Big Four for some reason or other. The Big Four. Yeah. Now, are you in this picture? Yeah. Uh, that's a. That was a. Well, there was a blacksmith shop in there, you know. Okay. But we had a. a kind of a first aid bunch. That's mm -hmm. what that was. We'd had a meeting, you mm -hmm. know. I think I'm in there. Can I tell? Can you tell? Well, I'm not really sure. Maybe I'm not. Let me get a little better look at it. Okay. Yeah. That was that was my uncle okay. by my by my my mother's side. Okay. There I am. Okay. Right here. Yeah. See if I can see. They're all dead, but me. Everybody. Well, you would have probably been about 25 or 30 then. Yeah. Yeah, in my early married life, anyway, because I worked nine, to six years down there. The first six years of my married life at Lehigh. Yeah, and that was a, as I say, it was kind of a first aid thing, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, then I finally got to be the quarry foreman. Mm -hmm. They had these lime kills up there, and, mm -hmm. and, and all, and I was just the foreman of the. Was all we had any place from ten to thirty. 40 men working in that quarry. Mm -hmm. That is when they done it by hand, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, then they changed it over to steam. Mm -hmm. I bought a steam locomotive. They called it a dinky. It was a dinky steam engine. So mm -hmm. it was operating though, you know. Mm -hmm. They put that, that took out all the, they had been pulling these cars with mules. Mm -hmm. So that the steam, the steam engine took the place of the, mule. the mules, right. and I was the first engineer. Of course, right. I had, at that time, I had been working on the B and O railroad over here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right. Uh, so well, you knew a little bit about steam engines. So, yeah. so I, well, something, yes. <laughs> so, uh, getting around to it, uh -huh. I was pretty well in the end of the quarry, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for some reason or other, they had. Uh, the, the regular engineer then of the of the dinky mm -hmm. was off for some reason or other, and somebody I didn't have anything to do with. My brother John was working down there too. He was mm -hmm. just out of high school, mm -hmm. but he was uh, crazy about that engine and things. And yeah. He'd been a kind of a brakeman on it, so on. Uh -huh. But somebody they had to have somebody to run that engine. Uh -huh. But I didn't have anything to do with putting him on it because mm -hmm. uh, somebody suggested that to the. To the big boss, mm -hmm. they put John run the engine. Mm -hmm. Well, I was up pretty near the length of the quarry there, and I heard somebody holler, and I run went down there, and John he had a you, you had one brakeman mm -hmm. that done all the hooking up and so mm -hmm. on for you know, and for some reason or other, and he said he was it was his own fault, mm -hmm. but he they they got a car off the track and tried to get it on, and he broke his leg. Oh. Right in the thigh. Oh. Well, uh, we had this first aid kit, and uh -huh. we couldn't find a darn thing. Oh, <laughs> my. So finally got him in a car and brought him. Mitchell, Lehigh and I had a hospital with old out here. Mm -hmm. um, he got over it. He got. My goodness. He's, he's been gone several years now. But uh, uh -huh. it, uh, I was kind of glad that I hadn't put John to it. Yeah. John was working under me, but then I hadn't had anything to do with yeah. putting him on there. Oh. Now this looks like a ball team of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> now, were you on this? Yeah. I'm on the end here. On the end. Do I look the top? Like I'll point it out so I make sure I get the right one. Uh, no, uh, here I am. I, that's what I suspected yeah, up here in the top yeah, corner. Yeah. That same smile. Kind of a funny thing happened about that. Uh -huh. Years later. Uh -huh. My wife and I were in Florida. We had a trailer. We were traveling, travel trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we happened that winter was in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, she broke, she fell and broke her hip. Mm -hmm. And while she was in the hospital, I think, well, we're down here and nobody will ever even come to see us. They don't know we're down where we mm -hmm. are, maybe. Yeah. It wasn't very long. There was somebody. The word got down there. and. Uh, this fellow come in, in, come out there to the hospital. We weren't too far uh -huh. from where they were. They had a home down there. And let's see if I can tell which one it was.
I believe it was I believe it was these two fellows up here. I don't make any difference. But anyway, he come carrying this picture in there. Oh. He says, "There's that old baseball team," and he says, "I know every darn one of them in there but one." Right. He says, "Who's that?" Oh my! <laughs> They're a long way from home. Yeah. <laughs> my. Pointed out my picture. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he just couldn't hardly believe it. Right. In fact, we didn't know very one one very well too much. We'd been on the same ball team. Just happened to cross paths. Okay. Well, let's see. This is the okay. This is the horses in front of uh, Hamer and Day Mortuary. Yeah. Did they use these for a hearse? Uh huh. Okay. That's what they really had them for. But they had this furniture store in connection, you know, with their business. Okay. They had a furniture store yeah, yeah. and a uh, mortuary. You know where they. Uh, you you know are you quite in Bedford, yeah. yeah. Well, you know where the furniture store is over there the, on the north side of the square. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that was Uncle Frank's. Okay, it was right there on the square. There. Yeah, right on the square. Okay, uh -huh. and that was a mortuary also. Yeah. At one now time. you know where they built the new jail up there. Yeah. Well, I can I can go back and remember Uncle Frank having a furniture store up there. Wow. And that's where he started the the. Uh, well, the mortuary business. Yeah. Corner of I Street and 15. Yes, yeah. yeah, and all. Isn't that and interesting? They, and they, they, see, it's Day and Carter now. Mm -hmm. Well, Uncle Frank and Mr. Day was partners. Mm -hmm. uh, but Mr. Day, well, they both uh, took care of bodies and things mm -hmm. like that. They had in the back end of this store. Mm -hmm. It was furniture up in front. I can remember that. Right. And this Arch Carter was just a young fellow then, uh -huh. and they, they, he was just working for them. Uh -huh. And they taught him to, to take care that of That was common in those days for a uh, furniture maker to also yeah. be an undertaker. Yeah. Uh, well, as I say, he was in, they just taught him to, and uh, they needed help. He, he was just a general flunky and all, but they <laughs> told him, they, they taught him the business. Yeah. And finally, when uh, they moved from there. They they went in down to this furniture store, uh -huh. and Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank, I think, earned the the, the furniture end of it all uh -huh. the time. You know. Anyway, it was in connection with it, and they had their mortuary upstairs, mm. and all. And uh, I remember while they uh, was down there, all oh, that's about the time I was in. I don't know seventh or eighth grade. No, it was after that. Anyway, see, my dad finally moved to Bedford. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to high school in Bedford. You mm -hmm. know, and I was there. Uh, this lady had died out at the hospital mm -hmm. with no no family. Mm -hmm. They couldn't offer, couldn't find any. Mm -hmm. Never located. They had her upstairs there, and Arch Carter had taken care of her, mm -hmm. embalmed her, and dressed her, and everything, mm -hmm. ready to be buried. And they just couldn't. I don't know how long they kept her. Right. Well, that was one of the things I'd do. I'd go down there at the store once in a while, and I'd go up that stairway, just go in there and uh -huh. look at that woman. I think they kept her two or three weeks. My goodness. You know, and, uh, never did find a family. Never did find a family. The county just paid for burying her or something. My you know, goodness. You know, and, uh, and then this is our last one we have, and this is your Uncle Frank on his horse? Yeah, that on, on his good saddle. He had a good saddle horse. Okay, I recognize the house from that earlier picture yeah. of mm -hmm. the group of people. And that was his saddle horse. And this is the one that E.Y. Guernsey got a lot of his information oh, yes. from yeah. to write the Yeah, the they were. Well, he he lived right horse. there next door to Uncle Frank. My. The house is still over there and Guernsey lived. Well, this one is too. Mm -hmm. But this was a frame house, but Guernsey had a stone house. Okay. Uh -huh. And now, I don't know, you ever acquainted around in Bedford, any? Yeah, I lived there for a while. Well, mm -hmm. would you know where the Hearst, uh, was it the Hearst? Fiddle Hearst, yeah. Mm, I don't think it's out so. out on 14th Street, across the street from Uncle Frank's, mm -hmm. had a stone fence around it, and on the top of every post was a round ball. Okay, oh. yeah, I've seen that. Well, now that's right. That was next door. That's then. right yeah. across the street from Uncle Frank's. Mr. Hurst, he was he owned a stone mill. You see. Mm, okay. Yeah, he I've had seen all that, that before. That stone. Noticed that. It, it cost a million dollars today. <laughs> well, whether we realize it or not, we've went for two hours or more now. <laughs> well, we, 
So I, I don't want to get everything all at one time. I'd like to, uh, to get together at the cemetery where there are a, a lot of questions I've had directed towards me that I really can't answer, but I think you can uh, because you know them firsthand at the cemetery. And then I'd also like to get with you down in the village itself and look at some things and ask you to point out some things that maybe would be better explained on location than we could do well, at home. So we'll just... Uh, I want to come out there. I told Priscilla today I want to I want to get a hold of a geranium and put out there at my wife's grave. Right. When my daughter's been here every year, uh, along about this time or something, she always got, she usually got two. Mm -hmm. And I, I take care of them out there. Well, I go out there and... Mm -hmm. uh, and Usually they'll last all summer, you know, mm -hmm. keep water. Right. So I want to get one anyway and take yeah. out there tomorrow if I can get it done or then out before Monday. Yeah. What is today's Friday? Uh huh. Saturday. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we can arrange a day next week and uh, and see if we can do that that yeah. time. And uh, where are you living now? I'm in Springville. Is Springville. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but we appreciate you showing us our pictures, especially this stack and pictures really help. Well, and I felt like this first interview, if we could do it at home to where we could just kind of relax and get acquainted, that that would help a lot. And uh, of course you answer one question and that raises five oh, others. Yeah. And that's the way these things work. Yeah. But, uh, but we appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, well, I've enjoyed it. I've, uh, I always I never get tired of talking about it. <laughs> no, but uh, I, uh, there's a lot of things I, I still wonder about too at that. Yeah. Yes. But as I say, I've always uh, uh, enjoyed being able to answer some questions that uh, I wasn't just trying to boss Stephen or something like that, <laughs> but uh, it's like uh, I said when, uh, what's the girl's name that was out there so long as that? Uh, Lois Gray was there. Lois Gray. Yeah. Well, any time I happened to be up there, yeah, and she was in there with a bunch of people, uh -huh. <laughs> she just shut down her part <laughs> and uh, called me over there. Well, I wish you could come spend the summer with me because that would be nice. <laughs> well, old Lois got, got me out of it. I, yeah. she, she, uh, she got me started uh -huh. down to campground, uh -huh. well, up there at the cemetery. Yeah. People just, uh, she just turned me over. To the, and of course, she always got questions and yeah. things. And yeah. They, uh, he was right there where he's first hand to uh -huh. answer them and so on. But then she got to call me to come down to campground and talk in an evening to, uh -huh. for she'd show some pictures or something and, yeah. and get me in. She's I I kept trying to kinda of get out of it and she just kept me at it. And well we might plan on uh, trying that help, help sometime me. this summer. In fact too. she'd come in and get me and take me out there. Yeah. You know, you know. yeah. But anyway, I uh, I always thought like it uh, I was doing more good for myself in the cemetery of both when mm -hmm. I could just be right there. Now Andy would have what he called his cemetery mm -hmm. uh, days and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, I made it the attempt to get, uh, or I made it my business to get out there a time or two. Mm -hmm. And he never even introduced me. Uh -huh. Andy never let on like I was there. Uh -huh. And uh, I felt a little hurt about it. Yeah. Of course, uh, I felt like I could add it a little to his part of it, but then I'm not talking against him now. Right, but right. Uh, that's the way it turned out. Yeah. I that done about I done that about twice. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't make any more attempts well, at it. I hope we can get you out there again, not only for an interview but also <laughs> just for the public. Well, and uh, and giving them a chance to meet you. Well, I don't. People get interested when they when there's just first hand stuff right uh -huh. there. The, the thing is, if we don't get all of this information down now, yeah. then in years to come, it might never be, uh, be well, found out. Well, and that's what we want to do. I'm, I'm not saying a thing in the world against Andy. I yeah. liked him, and I yeah. thought he was doing a good job. But uh, uh -huh. I felt like he could have improved it right for himself, <laughs> and, uh, maybe a little. 
Yeah. But we want to get all of the information down while we can. It's still yet today, you know, people <coughs> people don't connect me with this with this, the cemetery. Mm -hmm. The cemetery. I'll be out there leaning on my monument or something, and they'll mm -hmm. come along, you know, and say something about it, you know, and I don't know what, and I'd say this is my lot here. Uh -huh. Oh, do you belong around here? Uh -huh. Yeah. They look surprised. I says, yes, I just happen to be one of them. Uh -huh. All right. Well, we appreciate it, and uh, we'll be looking forward to the next.